Today's guest is pioneering the European fintech space. He's the co-founder and CEO of Bitpanda, a European investment platform based out of Vienna that just became Austria's first ever unicorn with its recent $1.2 billion valuation. Is that good? <laughs> Before Bitpanda, this gentleman traveled the world on container ships while working as the ship's mechanic. A true trailblazer who loves finance, crypto, transparency, and corporate culture, I am pleased to welcome to the Crypto News Podcast, Eric DeMuth. Eric, welcome to the show. Hi, and now I'm blushing a bit, so I ne never got such a great intro. I I have to remember that. So, all right, that's a good start for me. I, I love to hear that. How's Vienna, <laughs> treat, how's Vienna treating you right now? Um, Vienna from uh, Vienna in general, I'm here now for 12, 13 years. It's a fantastic city, um, super high living quality. But honestly, in the past 12 months, Vienna has treated me probably like every other city has treated, would have treated me with proper <laughs> internet. So, um, I'm, um, I'm, yeah, pretty much all the time inside in front of my computer. That's it. But I'm a computer kid. I'm, I'm, I used to do gaming, like I come from the gaming scene. I'm a bit older now. So already, but like since I'm 12, since there's proper internet. And so for me, I'm uh, quite privileged in that regard that I, uh, that really didn't really change too much for me. Nice. You have an incredibly fascinating background, probably the most interesting of our guests that have been on the pod. Talk about going from the ground floor to the penthouse. And I would love if you could start us off by telling a little bit about your story of how you literally traveled the world on a container ship and are now the CEO of a European fintech unicorn. Yeah, I mean, after doing high school or how you call it, A-levels before you study, you know, the um, yep. then with 19 at this time, you were already in Germany or you were done with school. And then uh, my plan was to become uh, like a captain, you know, like a captain and study uh, nautical stuff or navigation and then become a pilot for ships. Um, and then I realized, you know, what is a good thing is you learn everything from the ship. You learn everything uh, from the ground. So I did an apprenticeship, is it called? Yeah, so I learned to become a ship mechanic. So I, I have the kind of a, how do you call it, license. So I learned ship mechanic. Uh, but I realized after two or three months in there, that's not where I want to be. That's not the industry I want to be, but I still finished it because the experience was amazing. It was uh, two and a half years traveling the world. Um, and a lot of, you know, this is, this is, you're completely isolated. There's no internet or something. This is a lot of hard work. Um, the engine rooms are quite hot. Everywhere's oil. And this is, this is a rough atmosphere as well, you know? Um, and therefore for my personal development, um, it was, fantastic that I did it. I don't want to miss it, but I would never do it again, honestly. Um, but yeah, so I finished it. And afterwards, I came to Vienna to study um, business and finance. So then then, then the, the classic boring route started, you know. A little honestly. bit of corporate life? No, not really. It's I'm, I'm probably not, not made for this. So no. I tried, I, I mean, it's like, even right now, it's, 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 this is a big challenge for us when you're growing such a, you know, in such a big pace in the company, then I always have to fear that things getting too, too slow, you know, too, too, too much bureaucracy, too much hierarchy and so on. So this is a huge challenge culture wise. So I don't want to become the slow corporate traditional company. 100%. Before we jump into the nitty gritty of Bitpanda, uh, first I want to congratulate you personally for becoming Austria's first ever unicorn. That is an exceptional, just uh, that's bananas. That is an incredible feat uh, and congratulations, well deserved. In prep for this podcast, I came across a couple articles, blog posts and interviews that you did. And one blog post that you wrote, it was last month in March of 2021, you wrote a blog post about Bitpanda surpassing the billion dollar valuation mark in just your seventh year as business. And in that post, you did something that I don't think I've ever seen a CEO do before. You thank the whole team, every single employee, every single Bitpanda team member received a thank you and their name was in that blog post. That's absolutely incredible. Very rare. Never seen that. I have to ask you, 
as such a young CEO, what CEOs have you learned the most from and who do you try to model your behavior after? So first of all, um, why did I do this? And I asked my fiance and she said, and, and, I, and I, and I said to her, like, the thing is, and in the evening when I wrote this and I said to her, like, you know what the problem is? Every time the founders are being shown as the superstars, but all the work is completely done by hundreds of people. And I think it's not fair. I, I mean, I understand that you can't put everybody on a display all the time. This is a, a understandable also from the media perspective. But um, when you have the chance, then you should at least pay the respect that the whole team deserves. Um, and this is what we came up with when the, in the evening I said, like, I don't want to do a normal blog post. Let's what, you know, what, what can we do? Um, and then we came up with this and said, like, this is actually, uh, why, why, why isn't that normal? You know, um, but on the other, uh, but, to, but to your question, there isn't spe specific role models. And I'm also not the biggest fan of, uh, copying someone. Um, I think you passively or indirectly, when you read stuff over years, you talk to people, you get input, but it's not like, oh, this is great. I have to transfer it. But it's like all the information you constantly get every day. And then uh, I think in your, what is it? Subconscious, subconscious, yeah. you, subconscious. You, 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 because all these things get in, you know, like you're, you're getting inspired and then something comes up. Um, it's not like you are inventing the wheel It's probably done. This person has done this and then you find something that feels good. You know, it's not like a, a plan, like a checklist, but what feels good. And then you always have to reflect. At least I do. I always reflect and try to make things better. And most important thing, and this is what, uh, what, what I would say. Paul and I have, which is quite unique because we're two CEOs that only works because we leave the ego behind. Um, otherwise the whole thing wouldn't work also between us, you know, well said, but I can't tell you specific names. I mean, of course, there are a lot of inspiring people, a lot of people that have a lot of drive, but, um, I'm, I'm not a, um, fanboy per se, you know, <laughs> not a fanboy. <laughs> so let's jump into Bitpanda. Before I or you take a whirl and explain the company, tell me about the name. Why Bitpanda? Oh, yeah. The story is actually um, quite easy to tell and not that sophisticated as you think. We started with the name Coinimal <laughs> and nobody could spell it. And then we realized after a certain time that is a hor that was a horrible idea. Everybody was writing it differently. Um, and then we said, you know what? We have to come up with something that in all the different countries, all different languages, uh, everybody can spell. It's maybe quite catchy and has a positive, uh, you know, con what is it, connotation or is that this is a positive connection in your head, maybe. Um, yep. And also, most importantly, that is free. The domain is the dot com domain is free. That was that was probably you know <laughs> like the the absolute prerequisite for this. Um, and yeah, and then uh, we tried a lot of these. There were probably a lot of better names. 100% there are better names. But at this time, um, Panda is everywhere, everywhere the same bit uh, because we don't want it to have coin. I think bit is also more digital because there was already clear that we want to be more, you know, like do this for all asset classes. And, and uh, yeah, and the domain was free. <laughs> That's it, you know. <laughs> and the, the rest took care of itself. The, the name and the logo are pretty snazzy. Also, when are you guys coming out with an e-commerce store? I, when I was doing research for the show, I was like, oh, I haven't been on Bitpan in a while. I need to grab myself a t-shirt or a hat. Can you hook me up? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, actually I can, but there's no store or something. <laughs> little, little know. free PR. Um, yeah. So moving forward to Bitpanda though, again, just got the $1.2 billion valuation and early this week, again, we are recording on the 22nd of April, Thursday, the 22nd, April, 2021, you guys had some huge news come out. Bitpanda is now enabling its users to invest in fractional shares 24 seven. And before you jump into that and, and explain that for our guests, you had a quote, which was absolute money. And you guys 100% need to patent this. And the quote goes as follows. Bitpanda is now wall street without the walls. Even when wall street closes, I, Friggin' love that. That is absolutely brilliant. 
Tell me more about what that means and how that attributes to the vision of BitPanda. I mean, to be fair, it doesn't really make sense, right? Um, but everybody knows what it means. Um, when people think about Wall Street, let's say normal people, not people from the finance industry, like pretty much 99% or something, you know, 95%, um, then you think of, you know, there's big stuff going on and it's not very transparent and what they're doing with the money and things go up and crazy stuff is happening and then something crashes and so on. And all stuff, and especially in Europe, we have a problem that um, very, very few percentages, very, very few people own stocks. But there's, there's a certain reason for this. There's um, historically, you know, bad laws for this, tax, uh, no tax incentives, a lot of bureaucracy, and so on and so on. And um, then we said, you know, in the digital age, that's not necessary anymore because we're still trading or treating the stock market as the internet wouldn't exist pretty much from the from the structure itself and then we said you know like why don't we include everybody and everybody says you know democratizing democratizing well what does it mean it's not a fancy interface democratizing means literally giving everybody the same deal even if you have five bucks to invest in or five hundred thousand bucks you should get the same deal and and not like oh yeah i can't even buy amazon stock because when amazon stock is over 3k you know, then you, you still have the same problem that you already need to be wealthy to to get access to everything. And this is also in terms of uh, transparency that everybody gets the same deal. Everything is available at any time and um, remove this uh, also the barrier in terms of that is too sophisticated and you need bank advisors to tell you what to do because it's the biggest miracle. It's not, you know, it's not. You don't have to do um, fancy, you don't have to trade fancy, uh, uh, sophisticated financial products, but stocks trading and buying, for example, S&P 500 or, or Amazon stocks, that is not sophisticated. And, and uh, I think this is also what we want to re- say with the slogan, you know, when you remove the walls, it's actually not that complicated and everybody can participate. I love that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's enlightening. The barrier to entry and the ideology of Wall Street is always so high in the minds of the general consumer. It's scary. And, and in movies, like, you know, even in Wolf of Wall Street, they show that. It's, they show how tough it really is to get into. Um, but Bitpanda, the, the new, the new news, the news that you guys just came out with, you introduced mm-hmm. a new way of investing in stocks and ETFs. Now, Bitpanda as a whole has, a multitude of different trading platforms. You guys almost pioneered, correct me if I'm wrong, and were one of the first ever companies to allow consumers to fractionally invest in gold and silver. Mm -hmm. And now you are enabling consumers to invest 24-7, even when Wall Street closes any night, day, time, you name it, and at very low prices, as low as one euro per trade. Um, You have crypto, you have ETFs, and you have the whole nine yards. What are the next steps of Bitpanda look like after this? So um, we also released a new app yesterday and some new functionalities. And pretty much this new app or, or the new platform is the base of everything that is now coming. So in the next weeks and months, you will constantly see updates. You will constantly see new features and products. Um, you actually made it much better than everybody else who is interviewing because um, normally it's very like, what is your next feature and when are you releasing it? And then I always can say like, we can't do this. You know, it's like, the, first of all, let's, you know, like uh, improve everything we have right now. And then also we already have a roadmap. I can't really show you the roadmap. So you made it very sneaky, very, very good. But um, honestly, I can't really tell you, but there's constant improvement over the next weeks and months. And also we started with the beta um, because of the, fractional and the 24 seven, this is something that hasn't been done. So we start, we started only with 50 or 60, um, assets, um, popular stocks. And then over the next weeks, like we have to add hundreds of these and then that they do the, what, what comes with this, it, this is enormous. You know, this is not a standard pro because the thing is we built the whole infrastructure ourselves for this. 
Um, and that is why uh, it also took us quite long and also the license process with the regulator and so on. Um, there are constantly coming more features, but I can't really tell you right now what everything is. Okay, hey, I tried, I tried. I, I would constantly get, you know, like messages on Twitter or Telegram and like, when, 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 you know, and yeah, you know, you know how the industry works. Of course, I have a couple ideas and the future is bright. Let's talk about some of the products that you have released the Bitpanda yeah. card, this is huge. This this intertwines with controlling the whole 360 degree ecosystem. Tell me about the Bit the Bitpanda card. Excuse me. Um, the card was for me a missing piece because um, we want to be uh, the investment platform for everybody. But then I also I, me, let's 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 take uh, myself for example. I don't want to use hundreds. No, hundreds is of course too much, but let's say several um, platforms for my investing, for my money, for whatever I do with this. And and then I said, you know, we our philosophy is everything that has value in a digital world will be treated in the same way. And this is why, for example, have physical gold. What you said, you know, it's in a high security wall in Switzerland, but you can have a fraction of it, and and it's insured and everything. So. We want to do the same with stocks. We have crypto and everything. Why can't we spend all these things? Have you ever tried? You, I mean, like you can't you can't pay with an Amazon stock on uh, for your Starbucks coffee or something, or with your Starbucks a, a stock for your Starbucks coffee even better. Should be able um, to. Uh, and now you can. Now you can use the Starbucks um, stocks to play uh, to pay for your stock uh, for your for your for your coffee or or renew your Netflix subscription with. Netflix or with Tesla stocks or with Bitcoin or gold or Euro or whatever. And, and that's uh, it's the same philosophy with everything is uh, treated in the same way, also on the spending side. And this is why we brought this card now. And then there's also the Bitpanda savings. And um, that's, yeah. again, very cool as well. Savings is an important tool for everybody um, on to get started into investing on the long run that uh, you have. You know, um, everybody should have a long-term strategy, have a certain amount of money put on a long-term strategy for at least five, 10 or 20 years. Um, And with the rest, they can play around, you know, but um, this long-term strategy, a savings plan is perfect for this. And this is why we have the, we have the index, for example. Um, sorry, I don't want to sound like I'm doing a bit on a roadshow with a product here, but, but, but the index is also a tool where you can invest in the top five, top 10, top 25, um, cryptos by market cap and some other, um, some other things weighted. And then, and then it all automatically rebalances every month. So because also for me, I, um, you know, I can keep track of Bitcoin, Ethereum, maybe one or two other coins, but it's pretty much impossible for me to, uh, you know, keep track of 10 different coins or even 25 different coins and see what the development is there and so on. And then have trade. I can probably only do make mistakes there or be way too late or whatever to the party. Right. So, and, 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 and the idea like it's, it's structured or it's uh, the idea is like an ETF where um, you pretty much invest into the market and you say like, okay, we, I invest in the top 10 cryptos and it get rebalanced every month. So, that is the idea and this is and this combined also with saving plan i think this uh, this is something for many people that want to participate in the crypto market but obviously nobody can be the top expert and be ahead of the market this is impossible along with the launch bitpanda and the whole bitpanda team also unveiled a brand new website app and i guess new brand as a whole it's sexy it's sleek it's black mm-hmm. and white it screams professional. What was the purpose of that? You mean to have a good brand? <laughs> no, no, the new brand, the the new branding rather. So um, historically, we were uh, most of our customers were coming through word of mouth, and um, Paul and I also made the mistake that we uh, took care of marketing and brand way too late. So I think we hired, this is also a fun fact, we hired the first person in marketing at the beginning of 2018. The company was already like nearly four years old or something. So there was no marketing before. It was just a product. And um, 
And that was actually a mistake we uh, we made. And um, we were always focusing on product, product, product and speed. But when you want, especially with stocks here, when you want to bring investing into every day's life and to, for everybody, um, there is a huge educational component. You need to create a lot of content uh, for financial literacy that is not that great in Europe, unfortunately. And um, that only works if you have a strong brand where people like to interact with you on a, on a daily basis. This is essential nowadays uh, in the digital life. So, and, 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 and this is why now it was the time to, you know, also give the brand uh, quite some focus. So how did you guys get, you didn't hire a marketer until four years in, how did you acquire 2 million customers with very little marketing? Like that's, that's unheard of nowadays. Um, yeah, the, that's okay. So, uh, I recently, I got, asked, I got this asked recently and I gave the answer in the past years. Um, a lot of people got into crypto and it's not like you're collecting stamps and then you're saying, Oh, look at my stamp. You know, when you talk, when you meet someone from, for, for a beer or something, that's your, that's your personal hobby and so on. But when people get the first time into crypto, I have never met anybody who is who isn't then that excited that this becomes a daily topic for them and talking to their friends about it and all and, and everything. So this compared with, we invested very early on in support and user experience and so on. And, and I think for Europe, everything, you know, we did, I think we're always best in class with compliance and licenses and had, had all the, had never had any banking issues and so on. So, the process of getting into this sphere, into, into this, um, into this industry or into crypto with us was, I think, quite, or hopefully still is quite good. And therefore there was a lot of word of mouth that people telling, I, I did this and now more and more people talk about it. I used Bitcoin. It was a great experience. So this is the greatest, best conversion tool ever. You cannot have a better conversion than someone of your friends are, um, telling you, I made a good experience there. This is the absolute best thing and it's pretty much for free. So what else do you attribute to that though? You touched on the heavy focus on customer support, the back end. What else? There there must have been some other pieces to the puzzle that, that really made the user experience incredible enough to tell all their friends about it. Yeah, the, the easy onboarding. So something everybody's t we're talking in the last years, uh, blockchain and Bitcoin, and it sounds super complicated. Nobody knows what it is. And then in the end, you um, you create an account. You're done with verification and everything in five minutes. Um, and then a few clicks away and everything is done. You know, this is like you, 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 there's just not so much magic around it. You know, it's actually quite simple. And when people... Um, feel that they are in charge, then they start using it. You know, I, I, I don't think there is the big secret behind it. It's just like if the product works as promised, then everybody's happy. That's it. I bet another factor in that is the employee satisfaction, which is off the charts up at Panda. I forget which interview it was. It wasn't too long ago either. Um, I want to say it was end of 2020 or early this year, but you were in an interview and you were asked about your input on company culture and why you prefer in office working over remote work. I'd love for you to, to tell me a little bit more about that because I love this answer. Um, it's not that I prefer it completely. It's not an absolute answer. I think a hybrid model is important. So what we're currently doing, we're building a new office here in Vienna because by the end of the year, we will probably be around 700 people. And that is important, even though many companies said, oh, yeah, everything is working out remotely. We saw this in COVID. Yes, of course, because you didn't have another chance. Um, let's see how these things um, work out, everything remotely, when uh, things are going back to normal. Because I truly believe, okay, uh, one more thing. We hired more than 250 people during COVID, during remote work. That means I haven't, I haven't seen m most of the people working in this company myself wow. in person. So, and you cannot expect 
that you have the greatest company culture when you're growing, especially when you're a scale up and you're constantly growing. A lot of things are changing. You cannot expect to have a perfect teamwork, great culture, nothing. Everybody's happy, peppy, you know, um, when people don't even know each other. That, that doesn't work. Um, and I, I think that you need proper headquarter office, good facilities, um, activities where people meet, not just their team. Um, uh, that only works when teams work great together, not just inside one team. And, and, um, and then, uh, culture is a big thing. And I have a huge respect, uh, for the cultural changes. And we saw this for, from a lot of companies where they grew a lot and, you know, like superstars and everything. But then you see that internally things are getting uncomfortable and and these things with the, the culture aspect and the long-term thinking of your employees is very, very important. So therefore, uh, I think you need both. You need to have a proper home office, remote and office solution. And, um, yeah, I think that is more the future than have being fully remote. This episode is brought to you by our dear friends at Coin Poker, the world's premier crypto poker platform. CoinPoker is a revolutionary blockchain technology-based platform that was developed by an ambitious team of poker players. CoinPoker uses USDT stablecoin as the main in-game currency and CHP as in-game fuel, offering all benefits of the crypto world alongside. CoinPoker also features instant and secure transactions using USDT, Ethereum, Bitcoin, or CHP tokens and no KYC. You heard that right, no KYC. Coin Poker users get huge promotions as they give away thousands in fiat each week. CHP is the currency of the Coin Poker economy, providing players with exclusive benefits and supports future developments delivered to the Coin Poker community. My favorite part about Coin Poker is the mobile app. When I'm on the go, I whip out my phone and play a couple of hands of Texas Hold'em or Bet on Sports. They have an amazing sports book, really clean spreads, very clean UX, and an overall great time. If you'd like to check them out, go to coinpoker.com and give them a try. You talked about growing and scaling. Right now, you guys are the creme de la creme of Europe and deservedly so. I currently reside over in North America and I would love to see some more BitPanda action over in North America. I'm sure as many others would as well. And that is obviously a huge market that you guys will be penetrating. What would be the value prop or the pitch to North America? In my eyes, it would be something like Robin Hood, except not crooks. Is that fair to say or, or am I way off there? Yeah, but the plan is different. Um, it's, I think, quite unrealistic for us to go to North America right now. Um, there's no plan for that. So first of all, it's a completely different market. It's highly competitive. You have great people, um, great uh, companies doing a, a good job there already. And the biggest argument right now for us is you're in Europe, but um, many people think that Europe works like the US, 100% not. There are many, many, many different languages, many, many, many different laws, completely different culture. It's literally like entering 20 different countries and not one. And that is a huge, huge difference. So for example, just from a regulatory aspect, you get more, there's more right now like guidelines. And then all these countries have to put into national law and they have a huge uh, range or, or, you know, like how they can interpret it. So, when you say, oh, let's go and let's go to Spain, let's go to France, everybody has a certain different language, have it, uh, first of all, then have a different regulation, need different licenses. So it's literally, it's not like, oh, you're in Europe. No, you are in this country, in this country, in this country, inside Europe. Therefore, we have a lot on our plate. And this is also, I think, why it's very, very difficult for big tech players um, from the US coming to Europe. Um, because first of all, when they're successful, they have extremely, you know, so much to do. And this is also, I think, why Robin Hood, 
uh, didn't, um, you know, or right now pause their, their plans to go to Europe and to the UK. Uh, first of all, because they're hyper, it's super uh, successful in the US and, um, all the resources go in there. And then the market fragmentation inside Europe is just super extreme. You need very local approach. This is extremely, you know, what is culture? Yeah. And so much work. It's not like you can have one strategy for Europe that doesn't work. You need one strategy for each country inside Europe and people there. So yeah. Europe is very special, I would say. Far different. Um, I want to talk about Best Token, the Bit Panda Token. As at the time of recording this episode on CoinGecko, the Bit Panda Token, which is B E S T Best, is up twenty nine hundred percent on the one year chart. Is that good? <laughs> yes. I wish I got in a year ago. Tell me a little bit about Best Token and why did you choose the name Best? The the only thing. When I went on and when I first started Googling it, I was like best token and then you go best token into Google and then search engine optimization comes up and you have a million people who are bidding on the on the search words best token. Yeah. Um but it's an ecosystem token, you know. It's not a it's not competing with uh, with any other one. It's it's literally like a uh loyalty program on the blockchain, however you want to call it. Um <laughs> And it's more like a fun name. Paul came up with it. So uh, my, my CEO partner, he said, like, you know, what would be a fun name? Best, because it's the Bitpanda ecosystem. So I was like, Paul, oh, that's brilliant, you know. <laughs> that makes sense. Also, also a very, very easy progress. There, were, there wasn't a big committee and the agency that brought it up. And then Paul one day uh, called me and said, like, oh, you know what? I just realized I was on a bicycle. And um, uh, why don't we call it best? I said, okay, let's do it. It's great. <laughs> Tell me about the utility and and why any user of Bitpanda should definitely snag some some best coin. I'm, I'm in general. It doesn't matter if it's our own coin or something else. I'm never ch- shilling anybody into any coins um, <laughs> because, uh, as I said before, it's a very investment and money is a very individual thing, and everybody should understand what they're doing and then why they're doing it. Find it out for themselves, not because someone else is telling them that. Um, but uh, best so. We talked about all the different features we already have. And every time we bring out a new feature, there has to be something that we want to connect with our token that it makes sense to use it or that has some synergies or, you know, like features. Um, Of course, the biggest feature is um, that you can use it for less fees. Um, and there are more stuff to come. And also <laughs> we have like a VIP system in there or like a loyalty system in there. And because the, the price grew so much, uh, we have to rework this completely because now to get to the <laughs> highest levels, you, for example, you get cash back from the card and so on. You need to put so much money in, um, that we have to rework this. So we're currently working on this time actually with a, with a big group, like it's like an internal project to rework it and make it even better and come up with new stuff for this. So um, it's uh, it wouldn't be fair to talk about it because it's uh, quite soon it's going to change anyways. But uh, yeah, it will it will help all products. Let's say it like this. Nice. Eric, one of the things that me personally, I would love, I am not an accredited investor. And I know a couple platforms, one of them, I believe being FTX, is allowing the average Joe to get into early, not early stage, but to get into medium, large, small cap companies before they go public. I believe that was the case with Coinbase. I would chomp at the bit to get a platform like that. Is that going to happen with Bitpanda down the line? There's always a difference. Uh, I, I honestly have to tell you, I haven't, I have heard about it, but I haven't looked into this. So maybe I'm, I'm um, talking complete bullshit right now. But in general, I'm a big fan to actually own the asset. Um, and I'm not sure, but may- maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure if you're actually trading the stock there. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe you're just speculating on the price and you, uh, something Correct. like this. I don't know. Yeah. And um, that wouldn't really be possible in Europe, reg- regulatory wise. That's for sure. <laughs> so that's actually fun and interesting. And I think there are a lot of platforms that offer this, 
but I think they offer already, you know, like secondaries or something like, like, like real stocks. Um, I think this is coming up and FTX is probably a front runner or let's say an early adopter of this. I'm very sure that, I mean, they are, Jesus Christ, they're doing a fantastic job. This is insane what they are doing. Really, really, really good. The volume. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm just saying that um, this is not the final stage of uh, pre-IPO investment. I think this is the start. And um, I think they're doing a fantastic job with this. And I'm sure they will also be the first um, platform to bring this to the second level of uh, pre-IPO investment for everybody. I think um, they should do this. And it's fantastic that they are doing this because when they are doing it, then um, other people in the world also have to do it at a certain point. And that also gives, you know, some kind of necessary and good pressure to governments and regulators. They're like, guys, we're living in a global world, in a digital world where everybody can have access to this. Look at what, it, what all they are doing over there. And people can use their service. We also have to do something like this in Europe or in Asia or whatever a country. So um, to have these pioneers and people that are saying like there is there are no rules, you know. Also, for example, with our twenty four seven and fractional trade, there is now the digital age and there are no uh, new rules. And we need these guys. And what FTX is doing is 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 fantastic. Yeah, you're big on the digital age. You are huge on transparency. You did an interview in April of 2020 with CEO Magazine. Um, it was a very good interview. You were absolutely on fire and you brought up some points. I had to take notes on. Yeah. The interviewer asked you about the philosophy of Bitpanda and why you created sort of this new age internet tech slash fintech platform. And you spoke about it being a combo of new tech and old industry with the new internet and old finance. And you referenced the internet bringing everything together and democratizing things. And again, you're huge on that going through similar power shifts as industries like Amazon did with retail or Uber with the taxi industry. Do you have any hot takes on what industry might be the next to get absolutely swept off its feet? Food. How so? I mean, food and um, fashion. We have a new generation and also mind shift people that are now at school or, you know, young students, they, they think differently. They think much more, much more social or like, of course, on, on average, you know, like this is, and also, um, diff- they have a different perspective on climate change, on sustainability. And not, I'm not talking about green rushing, but like the real stuff, the long term things. Yeah. And. The fashion industry is completely broken. This is like the absolute worst industry. Um, the fast fashion stuff. I mean, uh, when you, nobody knows, but when you, when you look at what you're wearing right now, if you would know in your t-shirt or in your, or in your uh, cap you're wearing right now, what kind of stuff there and how it's produced, this is ridiculous. You know, this is so ridiculous. I can just, um, uh, everybody, um, um, you know, like recommend the, the documentary True, The True Cost. True Cost. Okay. True Cost is really good. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Um, showing, showing, you know, like the actual, why, why are things so cheap? Why is a t-shirt for five euro, for five dollars possible sent around the world, you know, yeah. with all the materials people hand, hand did, all the things, even the cheapest t-shirt is handmade. <laughs> this is like that, and this is a problem. There is a true cost, and you're not paying this. And also, what it has uh, effects on the climate. And same with the food industry. All the uh, this is like, oh yeah, let's have the cheapest meat. Yet there is a, there is a true cost behind it. There is a cost. There is a hidden cost. It's it's our planet and it's our health. And it's just for the short term, um, short term. How do you say uh, entertainment or, or pleasure? To have what cheap meat every day, yeah, that's not the solution, you know. And the solution is uh, probably uh, first of all a different mindset for everybody and getting to know what you're consuming, like literally consuming, because these two these two industry are the most intransparent industries. And then also 
technology should only just be a helper. So um, I think that what is it like laboratory grown uh, food will be the future. Uh, will uh, food and, and meat, for example, yeah. will be will be the future of this because there are no downsides. It's probably much healthier, much more controlled, and. Um, when this becomes for the technology wise cheaper than having normal food, then normal food is done and it will be a success for our humanity. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, Eric, this has been an absolute pleasure. A couple more questions before we let you go. Question numero uno. When is Bitpanda going public and when can I snag some Bitpanda shares? It's a good question. I got this question asked several times in the past month, and I don't know because um, this is not on our agenda yet. Um, there is a good chance that this will might happen one day, but it's literally not on our on, on, on our agenda yet. We have a lot to do until then, I, I would say. But you know, Bitcoin, 100K, it's inevitable. When's it going to happen? Oh, you, you, you're asking when and not what is what, what, what is my prediction for the price? This is also new. Um, yeah. Honestly, it could be this year. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. So, yeah. Dogecoin. Tell me about Dogecoin. And and when's, when's it going on Bitpanda? Or is it ever going to be on Bitpanda? It's, it, it's, it is on Bitpanda for a long time already. Is it really? Yes, of course. Oh, wow. My apologies. <laughs> this is, people are going crazy uh, right now with... with, with uh, with Dogecoin. Um, no, this has been uh, a long-term all-star on Bitpanda. So, yeah. I didn't even look. I'm I'm so anti-Dogecoin. I think part of it's just me being uh, me being petty because I missed the boat. Well, now I guess I missed the yacht pretty much with with the price it's at now. But um, absolute craziness. I no, what, what, just what, one thing. I, I I think it's it's more let's say a movement. Than, yes. an invest, than an investment for me. Investment is always long term. For me, this is more, let's say, um, a great story and a great movement than an investment. A narrative. Yes. Yes. Okay. It shows the dynamic of the internet, the power of the communities, and so on. DAOs, in, very interesting topic in today's, in present date. Would we ever see some type of almost NFT hedge fund? Uh, a, on the platform where people can invest in, you know, like a, a, mu a multitude of NFTs on Bitpanda? Um, I, I can find now very, very uh, diplomatic answers and not answering your question. But the truth is, uh, I don't have enough knowledge to answer that question properly in a satisfying way, I would say. This is not my ex expertise um DAOs right now so um there are some great people in the company that are blockchain developers and they you know like they are the best for this question but i'm not so i i'm i'm, I'm honest in that regard love the candor last question before we go second last question before we go if you are a young student and you want to get into crypto investing or anything in general and you want to put couple hundred bucks into Bitpanda and watch it grow. Where is the best place to learn about investing and what theories or what sort of ideology do you recommend people use to succeed? Mm, articles and YouTube, but YouTube, not in terms of uh, these hypey guys, you know, <laughs> that, that, that oh, you yeah. can already say, from the from the thumbnail, if they are like doing a screen thing and have like big flashy letters everywhere, Dogecoin is the new. Da, da, da. These are probably not your educators, um, but there are so many good ones nowadays. Uh, very good, comprehensive, uh, visual. Um, yeah, just like that. I mean, the, the YouTube, sorry, but YouTube is full of it. I mean, this is, this is, I don't even have to say, oh, you have to read, uh, or look at this guy or, or that woman. It doesn't really matter. You know, you, you, you find your, your, let's say, uh, your, your, your people that educate you not only about maybe crypto or Bitcoin, but also about uh, stocks and, and also please do not forget to educate yourself about economics. What is, what is inflation? How does money work? Um, interest and so on. What is like, you know, interest over a long term when you have savings plans on? 
just basic math behind it. Why do we have such a system and so on? Understanding these things, the macroeconomic stuff, you don't have to be like, you don't have to have a major in that, you know, a degree in that, but just let's say five or 10 good YouTube videos on macroeconomics and then go into uh, investing. You, you're set. You're set. You, this is not rocket science. You heard the man, Eric. <laughs> this has been this has been absolutely incredible. I learned a lot during our conversation, and I learned uh, an absolute shit ton during the prep for this podcast. It was a blast having you on. I really appreciate it. All the best to you and the Bitpanda team. Not that you'll need it because you guys are absolutely tearing it up, but uh, I'm very happy for you. Very proud of you. Congrats again on the on becoming the first ever unicorn. Um, in, in the country. That's incredible. Thanks for, thanks for coming on and, uh, hope you had a boss. Thank you very much. And yeah, absolutely. It was, it was fun. And thank you that you're, uh, you're one of the very few people that actually are well prepared for this. You know, this is, this is really nice. <laughs> this is, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. In a second life, uh, you would definitely be a hockey player playing in the NHL. And, uh, <laughs> you're from Germany. Yeah. Yeah. I'm German. Yeah. Yeah, the Leon Dreisaitl guy's tearing up the NHL right now. One of the best in the game. He's doing I, well. I, I I was before I went to the ship. I was doing a ten, I was a tennis trainer. I had a tennis trainer license, so it's, oh, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm 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 more more into that sport. But yeah, nice. Well, uh, the the flow looks good. I can't wait to get a bit panda hat. And, you know, I got the flow going too, so I'll be <laughs> rocking that. But Eric, thanks again. Appreciate your time and wish you all the best. Perfect. Thank you very much. It wasn't it was really fun. Thank you. Folks, this is the CryptoNews.com podcast. We hope you had a blast listening to this episode with Eric, the CEO of Bitpanda. Go check him out. Incredible company. If you enjoyed this, please hammer that subscribe button. We would love if you could follow us along, and we will see you in a couple days. Hope you have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.